Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're tackling a fascinating and honestly kind of funny question. Why do redheads need more anesthesia than everyone else? Now this isn't just an old wives tale or something your dentist made up after struggling with a red haired patient. There's actually hard science behind it. In fact, multiple research studies have shown that people with natural red hair often require more anesthesia, sometimes significantly more than their brown or black haired counterparts. This is one of those topics that blends genetics, anesthesiology, and a little bit of fun. And I'll be honest, it's also one of my favorite anesthesia trivia facts to pull out at dinner parties. Most of the time, people don't even know that it's actually a thing. So today we're gonna to break it down. What's going on genetically? What studies have discovered? How it impacts anesthesia care? And why it's such a great example of personalized medicine in action. Long before the science caught up and genetics became a buzzword, Anesthesiologists and dentists had been noticing that people with red hair seemed to have a need for more of certain types of anesthesia than other people. But for a long time, it was just kind of a hunch. So imagine that you're an anesthesiologist and you're giving a patient an inhaled anesthetic for a routine procedure. You're slowly increasing the dial, watching the patient's response, but your patient isn't getting sleepy at the same concentration that usually works for everyone else. So you keep going up, little by little, and finally, at like a pretty hefty dose, they finally drift off. Or maybe you're a dentist, and one of your red-headed patients gets the standard lidocaine injection, but 10 minutes later, they're still feeling everything when you start to drill. So you refill your syringe with more anesthetic and keep giving more and more, but it just doesn't seem to work. Now, if you're not in medicine, maybe you're thinking, what are they talking about? This sounds like witchcraft or something. Maybe you've heard your red-headed friends talk about it. I need double injections when I go a dentist. Ain't a lucky me. At first, people thought this was just folklore, or maybe it was coincidence. Maybe dentists are just easily distracted by freckles. But eventually, science would step in and say, actually, hold on a minute. There's something real going on here. So what really makes redheads different? The answer lies in a gene called MC1R, which stands for melanocortin-1 receptor. MC1R is a receptor found on the surface of melanocytes, the pigment-producing cells in our skin and hair. Normally, when stimulated, MC1R helps produce a pigment called eumelanin, which is the dark pigment that gives us black and brown hair. But when MC1R is affected by a specific kind of mutation, which is what happens in most natural redheads, the receptor doesn't work in the same way. Instead of triggering the melanocytes to produce eumelanin, they produce a different pigment called pheomelanin, which is reddish-yellow in color. And that's why red hair happens. But interestingly, the MC1R gene isn't only expressed on pigment cells. It's also expressed on neurons, astrocytes, and microglia, which are types of cells found in the brain. In these cells, activation of MC1R alters the way they interact with pathways that are involved in pain perception and opioid receptor function. That means the same gene that gives someone red hair also changes how their nervous system processes pain and how it responds to certain types of anesthetics. Isn't that awesome? Well, I mean, I guess not when you're screaming in pain during a root canal, but I just mean in general, it's crazy. Okay, so now let's talk about the hard evidence. One of the most famous studies about this came out in 2004 in the journal Anesthesiology. Researchers looked at women with natural red hair and compared them to women with dark hair using desflurane, which is an inhaled anesthetic. What they found was really interesting. The redheads needed almost 20% more desflurane to achieve the same level of anesthesia as the dark-haired women. Now that's not just a tiny difference. In anesthesia, we titrate drugs pretty carefully because even a few percentage points matter. So a nearly 20% difference is a clinically important finding. Another study looked at local anesthetics, like the lidocaine that dentists inject before drilling. And it found that redheads were less sensitive to the numbing effects, meaning they often needed higher doses or multiple injections. And a third study found that redheads may be more resistant to certain types of pain medications. So when your ginger friend says, that numbing medicine never works on me, they're not just being dramatic. Their MC1R mutation is literally making multiple different types of anesthesia drugs less effective. But here's where it gets even more fascinating. It's not just about needing more drugs. Redheads also appear to process pain differently than other people do. 
Research has shown that they're more sensitive to thermal pain. For example, they might find a hot stove or a cold ice pack more painful than someone with dark hair would. But paradoxically, they appear to be less sensitive to electrical pain. So if I give them a mild electric shock, which I'm not recommending, they might just be like, yeah, what's the big deal? Whereas someone with brown or black hair might jump or scream and freak out. Now this tells us something really important. The way pain is experienced isn't uniform across all people. It's not just high pain tolerance or low pain tolerance. It's modality specific, meaning that different pathways in the nervous system can be dialed up or down depending on genetics. For anesthesiologists, this means we have to be vigilant, not just with dosing, but also with anticipating unusual responses to pain and sedation. Okay, so let's get practical now. What does all this mean for us when we're caring for patients? Well, first, if you're an anesthesiologist and you see a redhead on your OR schedule, it should make you think, okay, this person might need higher doses of anesthesia. Not always, but often enough that it's worth paying attention and asking them if their hair color is natural. Second, we should listen to our patients. If a redhead tells you that local anesthetics never work for them, they're probably right, and you should adjust your plan accordingly. Third, we need to be careful with balance. It's not as simple as just give them more of everything. Some drugs may need higher doses, but others may not. The art of anesthesia is tailoring care to each patient's individual physiology. Like when people ask me what being an anesthesiologist is really like, I like to say it's like being a pilot, except you're flying a different plane every time and there's not always a maintenance log. So sometimes it's brand new and flies like a dream, no problem. And sometimes it's old and run down and has almost crashed a hundred times before. And like the upholstery is all torn and the TVs don't work and the landing gear sticks, but you've still just got to do your best to fly it, keep everyone safe and bring it back in for a landing, which isn't always easy. That's why we can't just rely on weight or standard dosing tables. Human variability is real, and hair color happens to be one of those rare visual clues that actually matters. So what's the takeaway here? The big lesson is that we live in an era where we're realizing more and more that one-size-fits-all dosing doesn't really work. Genetics, age, sex, body composition, and even race can influence how people respond to drugs. Redheads are a perfect example because the difference is visible. You can see the hair color and suspect what's going on genetically. But there are countless other variations in the population that we can't see, and those matter too. Someday we might run genetic tests before every surgery to fine tune our anesthetic plans. But until then, awareness, vigilance, and tailoring care to each individual remain our best tools to keep our patients safe. So why do redheads need more anesthesia than everyone else? It's because the MC1R mutation that makes their hair red also changes how their nervous system processes pain and responds to anesthetic drugs. For patients, this means you don't really have to worry, at least not in this day and age. Anesthesiologists are trained to adjust doses and monitor your responses closely. For providers, it's a reminder to keep your plans flexible and never assume one size fits all, especially if your redhead patient tells you they've had issues before. And for all of us, it's just another example of how fascinating and complex human biology can really be. If you found this interesting, and how could you not? Give the video a thumbs up, subscribe for more deep dives into the world of anesthesia, and let me know in the comments. Redheads, have you noticed anesthesia works differently for you? And providers, have you seen this yourself in the OR? I'd love to hear your stories. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.